Oh, <laughs> like, Eli like Elizabeth Taylor, who is appearing on Broadway, Ken Norton is here because of the name he created in the past. He's here using his name as a sort of credit. And Jerry Cooney, likewise, is here to use his name also as a credit on his record, on the record of Jerry Cooney. It would look nice to beat a Ken Norton. But can he beat a Ken Norton? Let's take a look something at something at Ken Norton's past. It's an interesting past. He got a reputation primarily for losing most fights to great fighters with one very notable exception. It was like slaying a giant. Few fighters of that time even dreamed about beating Muhammad Ali. But in 1973, a young, relatively unknown Ken Norton found himself face to face with that legend. Norton, once a sparring partner with the only other man to have beaten Ali, Joe Frazier, broke Ali's jaw early in the fight, and he dominated him from start to finish. Seven points, Norton, five points, three. I'm totally elation. Just totally elation. I was, uh, I did the so-called impossible. I was eight to one underdog. I, I I toppled the world, the boxing world. I, I changed everything around completely, which is the same situation I'm in now. I'm I'm an underdog. I'm supposed to be too old. I'm supposed to be out of shape. I'm supposed to be a uh, a bit too slow. And uh, I haven't fought but once in the last two years. Whatever motivates him, money or pride, Norton is preparing for his 51st fight. It is both a successful and disappointing pass that drives him on. Anyway, championship of the world. After losing a rematch with Ali, Norton had his first oh, championship good, bout good against right George Foreman. The, the powerful the Foreman son. brought him to a humiliating defeat in two rounds, exposing a serious chink in his armor. Norton goes down again, a left hand on the side of the head. His legs are rubbery as a left hand goes to the side of his head. A right up, I got a left jab, and a vicious left. Then Norton crumbling to the canvas. The knockout stopped time. Norton only temporarily. While Hollywood was making his near-perfect body a sex symbol, he was preparing for a third match with Muhammad Ali. He beat Jerry Quarry on the way to his real goal, the championship. he could beat Ali any time and he went into this fight with that attitude. He fought hard and many observers thought he won. So much into it and he won the fight so beautifully and he executed his uh, fight plan so beautifully and he had so much left after the 15th round. And everybody uh, told them afterwards that, uh, gee, you got robbed. Everybody that you talked to said, Ken Norton won that fight. If you put all that effort to work, that supernatural effort, and then you win a fight against an opponent who's supposed to be the greatest of all times, and then they don't give you the decision, that is a big disappointment. It was like somebody stuck their hand inside Kenny's chest and ripped his heart out. It just didn't work. From that point on, my career, my career went on a tailspin. I was, each fight was increasingly worse than the one before. I didn't train as hard. I didn't do anything as hard. And uh, I started going through the motions. Back to the drawing board and the speed bag. With Muhammad Ali coming to the end of his reign, anybody might still become the next heavyweight champion. When Leon Spinks and Ali fought a rematch, the WBC vacated the title. And Norton, with Ali taunting him from the crowd, beat Jimmy Young and later was declared the champion. Of the world heavyweight title. But Norton's first opponent was the unbeaten Larry Hone. A close 15-round fight that many have called one of the best heavyweight championship fights ever, 
ended in another disappointment for Norton. As Holmes comes back, scores a kick shot. He's got Norton in trouble. Yes. 143, 142 for the new Larry Holmes has done it. Norton had lost another championship fight, but barely. He has fought the best of them and fought them well. Well, Ken's used to a lot of pressure. He's used to tough fighters that he's fought, you know, which Cooney hasn't really faced any real tough guys, you know. And Ken will be one of the toughest tests he's had. Cooney's another fighter who's undefeated and supposedly a good left hand who's not, who really hasn't done anything to impress me that much. After a 15-month layoff, Norton defeated an inexperienced but strong young fighter, Randy Cobb, and he's been in training ever since. I think I have more experience. I think I'm stronger. I think I'm as quick as not quicker. I think I'm more intelligent. And uh, basically, I think I'm a better fighter. I'm in shape. And exactly four years ago tonight, this is what he did to another bright prospect. About Jerry Cooney, to be sure, he is inexperienced. He has never fought more than eight rounds. He has fought only 86 total rounds in his professional career. They say he is a one-handed fighter. They say they don't know if he can take a punch. Well, whether or not he can take a punch, one thing is absolute. He can throw a punch. Six months ago, Jerry Cooney fought Ron Lyle in Long Island's Nassau Coliseum. The fight lasted two minutes and 49 seconds. Cheering lasted 20 minutes. Long Island is not a place with many heroes, but Jerry Cooney has become the man. The man to touch, to kiss, to shake hands with, and to root for. He's a New York kid with a big Irish smile. I love him like a son. Like them, he commutes to work in New York City on the Long Island Railroad. And someday, probably soon, he's going to make it big. And as they say, if you can make it big there, you can make it big anywhere. There's no place like home. And New York is home for Jerry Curry. He's a crown. very essence. Uh, when he fought in the Nassau Coliseum on October 24th, and you heard 10,000 voices almost singularly crying out, Cooney, Cooney, it was like his very blood. It, it gets you so up that that's why it's so important to have those people in those seats. Cooney started as an amateur at the Garden, winning the Golden Gloves in 1973 and 1976. It was a great feeling. I was 16 years old, and I came out and fought in front of 21,000 people. And was successful and knocked the guy out in the third round. So yeah, it was a great moment for me. One of my great moments in the garden. And as a professional, he fought in front of garden crowds a dozen times, getting his first starring role as the main event against Dino Dennis in a dramatic display of his punching power. I don't want to be a star. I want to be a successful prize fighter. His regular gym is Bobby Gleason's, where Jake LaMotta trained. But this past week, the garden has become his gym. He has a devastating punch, which has cost him a lot of sparring partners. And he has a trainer, Victor Valley, to whom he is totally devoted. I used to see all the fighters. He said, Jesus, this guy's good, this guy's that. He said, Jerry, one of these days, you're going to be number one in, the, in this gym. And number one he was. Then I told him, you're going to be number one in the well. He's number one now in the well. And now I'm telling Jerry now that I'm going to make Jerry champion of the well. There are doubters, however, who question his stamina, his inexperience, his ability to take a punch, and his one-handedness. One of the knocks, of course, is that he has no right hand. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he knocked Ken on and out with a right hand. I mean, Jerry is left is, is, is so devastating that, of course, all the attention has been focused on that. His right hand is dynamite. And at the 
But the left was the weapon that stopped Leroy Boone in the sixth round in Atlantic City in December of last year. Against Jimmy Young, the right hand had a short debut, but the left dominated. The fight was stopped after four rounds because of a bad cut on Young's face. And it was after only two minutes, 49 seconds, that veteran Ron Lyle was stopped with a vicious left hook to the ribs. One hand or not, Jerry Cooney is an ominous puncher. You're a professional that he's trying to take from you, and you have to take from him first, you know? It's just one of those things. Um, you have to get him before he gets you. It's similar to being a gladiator, I suppose. But the gladiator is a friendly New York kid who just wants to stay that way. I don't want to be any different than anybody else. And uh, I just go and do my work. That's all that's important to me. But for Jerry Cooney, it may be too late for that. This is called Cooney Country. And so far, he is the king of the land. at the start of the Jerry Cooney Ken Norton fight live from here in Madison Square Garden in New York. Larry Merchant, you made a point at the top of the show where you talked about the fact that Ken Norton historically has had problems with bangers and that certainly is what he's got tonight. Well, everybody has to remember the fights against George Foreman in particular because he was a young, very live heavyweight at that time and he just sort of crumbled in front of George Foreman, went to the ropes and Foreman just wore him down, destroyed him in the second round. And later against Ernie Shavers in that period of time after he lost to Holmes and in which he said that he wasn't taking much interest in boxing anymore, again Shavers, a great banger, put him against the ropes and destroyed him in one round. And you look at Ken Norton leaving his locker room now, heading down toward the ring, a very stern look on his face. One might even call the look that we see right here even more than stern, perhaps concerned. I think it's a look of reality. Wait, get to the ring, get the job done. So Ken Norton starting to make his way into the ring. Norton sweating profusely, and Ray, you've made the point before that's very important that a fighter get warm in the locker room. Yes, sir. A fighter must loosen up very well because a lot of fighters start off early and they're not loosen up enough, and the body reacts very differently. Let me ask you another hypothetical question, Ray. If you're Ken Norton, how do you fight this fight? Norton said in the Larry Holmes fight that he made a mistake in letting Holmes win the first few rounds. Now he's in a position where, in all honesty, I'm sure even he doesn't know if he can go the 10 rounds. So he may have to go out and get him early. Well, he must go out and do damage early. I think he can intimidate Jerry Cooney. Cooney's young. Cooney never really been in with a guy like Ken Norton. And Ken Norton really has enough to get Cooney out of there. But you never can tell. The criticism of Cooney, of course, if any criticism, it's hard to criticize a guy who's won 24 fights and knocked out 20 of his opponents as you look at Ken Norton. Norton is a man right now in Never Never Land. He has got to go out and get this fight, or I think it's safe to say that it's just about over. But, but I know, you know, in a way, there's a much greater risk on the part of Jerry Cooney. Uh, he's making a million dollars here, so whatever happens, you can't, you can't run any benefits for him. But on the other hand, he has big money purses already awaiting him as the number one contender. And unless he takes out Norton quickly, they're going to say he's just not the prospect that everybody thought he was. Well, as you see Cooney leave the locker room and head toward the ring himself, you look at his record, 24 wins, no losses. He has 20 knockouts, not the 14 that you just saw there. Cooney is a guy who unquestionably can punch. As a matter of fact, of those 20 knockouts, 10 of them have come inside of two rounds. So I think the first two rounds are going to be interesting here to see who dictates the pace of the fight. His average fight has gone about three and a half rounds. Stamina shouldn't be a problem for him here, even though he's never gone more than eight rounds. This is only a 10 round fight. He's not fighting a fighter who's gonna run a great deal from him. It's not a 15 round fight. In that case, you would seriously wonder how he would react in the late round. Let me once again, Ray, ask you about the psychological aspects of the sport of boxing. Cooney has made Norton be the first one in the ring and wait for him. Is that an advantage? Sometimes, especially here, I think uh, by being a hometown favorite, it plays a, a role, a psychological role on your uh, challenger's uh, head. Okay, okay. Ken Norton, of course, is a guy who has aspired to the heavyweight championship for years and years. I think maybe Jerry Eisenberg of the New York Post put it best when he said, destiny always seems to sneak up on Ken Norton and kick him in his aspirations. 
So Norton is the man who now must await. Jerry Cooney's coming into the ring. He is about to do so now as he makes his appearance before the Garden crowd. The crowd comes to its feet singularly here to cheer on Jerry Cooney, who without question is the hometown favorite. He comes in clad in a green robe. All his handlers are in green. Jerry Cooney is the public choice, to be sure. Cooney, too, comes in looking very stern, very concerned at this juncture. This is a big shot for him. You look at the Garden crowd here. Cheering on Jerry Cooney, there is Don King, of course, one of the biggest and most powerful promoters here. And another onlooker who is ringside. We'll try to get a shot of him as time goes on. Many, many celebrities ringside here, but Joe DiMaggio was introduced to the crowd moments ago and drew the kind of applause that the Clipper always does draw here in the city of New York. He is still an idol, even some... 20 years almost after his retirement, 30 years I should say, after his retirement from the game of baseball. So Ken Norton and Jerry Cooney just about to have at each other in this showdown fight. It is absolutely, even though I admit to it being a cliche, a must fight for Ken Norton, for Jerry Cooney. It is a fight he has to have if he wants a title shot. And that, of course, would be the next logical step for him. To the ring announcer now and Jack Lee for the introduction of the fighter. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Madison Square Garden, the world's number one sports and entertainment center for tonight's 10-round heavyweight main event, sanctioned and supervised by the New York State Athletic Commission, Jack Prenderville, chairman, your judges for the main event, Harold Letterman and Tony Castellano. The timekeeper is Fred Abatello. Counting for the knockdowns at the bell is Johnny Lobianco. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here are the principals in tonight's 10-round heavyweight main event. In the corner, to my left, he hails from Los Angeles, California. He wears dark blue trunks trimmed in white. He weighs 225 pounds. Here is the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Ken Norton. Norton. His opponent in the corner to my right, undefeated in 24 professional fights with 21 knockouts. He hails from Huntington, New York, 200. 25 and a quarter pounds. He's decked out in all green with white and red stripes. Gentleman Jerry Cooney. Ten rounds, final contest of the evening. The most important scene, my command break. Stop pushing and stop back. If you score a knockdown, I want you to go to the farthest neutral corner, stay there until I tell you to come out. Right. Three knockdowns in one round will end the fight. Now 40 seconds. The bell will not save anybody from being knocked out, right? If a fight is on the floor, please don't come in. I call for disqualification. I hate to do that. So stay away. Wait till the fighter gets up, then you can help him, all right? Any questions? Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Well, Ray Norton in his introduction borrowing a little something from the Sugar Ray Leonard playbook and doing a little dance and a series of jabs as you look at the tail of the tape. Norton, 11 years the senior of Jerry Cooney, 6'6", the 6'3", big height advantage. The weight is just about comparable. So is the reach and all the other measurements. Round one underway. Norton on the right, Cooney on the left. The tactics of Ken Norton in the early rounds will be interesting to say the least. Whether he decides to pace himself, whether he decides to go after the number one challenger. Ten rounds, three knockdown rule is in effect. The bell cannot save either man. A right hand buckle the knees of Norton by Jerry Cooney. First punch of the fight buckled Norton's knees. Left hand to the stomach and another right hand to the side of the head of Norton who stands on the ropes. Left hand to the heart by Cooney. Norton bangs away now at Cooney in Norton's corner. 
And another left hand scores, and again, the legs of Norton wobble. Norton is hurt in his own corner. Cooney trying to measure him. Misses two uppercuts, but scores with combinations of left stands. Norton straight up. Norton is about to drop. Norton is on his knees and finally slumps in the corner. He is not going to get up from this. The fight is over in 54 seconds. power of Gary Cooney. Ray Leonard, I think that doubt was put to bed right here. All right. Cooney went out and did pretty much what I expected, but that was very dangerous when he was able to deliver it five, six blows, and the referee just stood there. I think the referee should have stopped the fight a lot sooner. North was almost in a position where he was unable to fall down. He was kind of in a lodged position in his own corner. His knees never did touch, and so Cooney, of course, doing the right thing by just continuing to punch, but I think you make a very good point in that Tony Perez may have considered stepping in a little bit sooner than he did. Norton was out on his feet. Norton is still on the floor in his own corner. The first punch that hurt was the first punch of the fight, and it was a right hand that caught Ray or Ken Norton right on the side of the head. Well, I was going to make a comment earlier about uh, Jerry Cooney not having any perspiration on his body that he had not warmed up. But as we can see, uh, he didn't need to warm up because he possessed so much strength. And I'm pretty sure this is going to silence a lot of the critics that Cooney has one hand. Well, I don't think there was any question about it. Right from the start of the fight, Cooney hurt Norton with the first punch. Now, I don't know. You may have to go back and you say, was Norton really prepared for this fight? Because the first punch of the fight buckled his knees. Well, I'm quite sure Ken Norton was prepared for the fight. In fact, he's been in the ring with some of the all-time greats, and he knows what happens when you get into the ring unprepared. Ken Norton was in tip-top shape, and I'm quite sure he will give Cooney credit. Now, you and I have had a chance to watch some of the great heavyweights. We've watched Larry Holmes together. Just off the top of your head, how would you compare a Jerry Cooney right now with a Larry Holmes? Well, Larry Holmes still has so much more uh, physical attributes. Holmes can move, Holmes can punch, Holmes has a good jab. Whereas that, we, we really, be, I think, be very curious to see what Jerry Cooney can do with a guy that is mobile and really a good technician like Larry Holmes. Well, of course, tonight is a great indication of the punching power of Jerry Cooney. There's no question about that. As far as stamina, how far he can go, what he would do against a champion like Larry Holmes, that still remains to be seen. That's true, but what he exemplified tonight, I'm quite sure he's in the back of a lot of people's minds. Right now, they have brought a stretcher into the ring to deal with Ken Norton, who is just now getting to his feet. There's no question that Ken Norton was literally out on his feet. We will try to get a report and give you a medical report on Ken Norton just as soon as that becomes available. The punches that was delivered by Cooney and the leverage and, and balance that he had with him, I'm quite sure, I can almost say a guarantee that Norton, God for me, has a concussion. I think you can see that Ken Norton is conscious. He is sitting on his stool now. Commotion raining all over the ring. More people in the ring, I think, than in the house here at Madison Square Garden. Jerry Cooney acknowledging some of the photographers standing up in the ringside. Acknowledging the crowd in there, unquestionably the crowd favorite. I think everybody just looking at the people around here, Ray. Everybody has kind of a shocked expression on their face that the thing ended as quickly as it did. We're up in the ring now. Jerry, when did you? How early in that round did you hurt him? Well, I hit him with a straight right hand, and I saw him uh, back up along the ropes. So Vicky told me to be cautious at all times. And if I see my openness to go in and uh, work on the work that's playing, Victor was training for five, well, for I don't know how long, up in the Concord and in New York, he had trained and told me the right thing. Do you, do you feel in some way, Jerry, that the quickness of this fight, <coughs> excuse me, robs you in some way that people will say that Ken Norton just couldn't fight anymore? It doesn't matter to me anymore. I have my people here, um, my fans, we train hard. Mike Jones, Dennis Ravenport, Victor Valley, and myself. All right, we just love him. That's all. All right, what is next? Is Mike Weaver next for the WBA championship? Uh, look to my managers, Mike Jones and Dennis Ravenport and, and uh, Victor Valley. All right, Valley. Mike Jones here is nodding and saying that Mike Weaver will be your next opponent for the heavyweight championship. Would you explain to our audience why Mike Weaver instead of Larry Holmes? Well, since I turned professional, I just do the fighting. 
my managers do the managing, and my man here does, gets me in shape. I just leave right. it that way. Well, they must be doing a perfect job so far. Dennis Rappaport, would you tell us why is he fighting Mike Weaver instead of Larry Holmes? We really didn't have a choice. Our first preference would have been Holmes. Holmes has refused to fight Cooney in spite of what he said to the media, where he verbalizes one thing, but in fact, to the truth, when it came time to sign a contract, he refused to, he, they never signed. Kay was supposed to get back to us three months ago. Me and Mike called him several times. Never got back to us. After a meeting where we were supposed to sign a contract. Are you concerned that the critics will say, well, he's beaten another fighter of the 70s. He's now going a total of about four or five rounds with fighters in the 70s, but he hasn't fought a good young fighter yet. Larry, if, if, at the end of Jerry's career, he never goes more than two rounds. Thank the Lord, and we'll be very happy. It'll prove that he's the greatest fighter of all time. Let the, let the cynics ask the same questions when he's heavyweight champion of the world, because that's his destiny, the championship of the world. Thank you very much. I'll be back in a few moments. I'm going to try to reach Ken Norton. Back to ringside. All right, thank you very much, Larry Merchant. Larry is now working his way through some of the crowd to try to get to Ken Norton's corner. We will try to have a report just on what kind of condition Norton is in. If it is at all possible, we will try to get an interview with the loser. We right now are going to have an opportunity to look at the entire, when I say entire, I mean 54 seconds of this fight. There was just never a doubt about the outcome of the fight from the first punch that was thrown by Jerry Cooney, which was a right-hand lead. You heard him talk to Larry Merchant about it as it being a straight right hand. When it happened, I believe we said that the knees of Ken Norton buckled. And now let's take one more look. Ray Leonard, we're going to get a chance to see from the beginning of this fight right to the end of it, 54 seconds long. They started in the center of the ring, and you can see Norton really not going to that peekaboo kind of defense. In the early round. Well, Norton tried to uh, see whether or not his left jab could do any damage to Cooney. And this is a very fast pace, especially for heavyweights. Now the right hand from Cooney will come right there. The right hand, and you see the knees of Norton buckle just that quick. Great shot. Well, Cooney possessed so much strength, so much power in his left hand and his right hand, as we see. And here he's just taking control of Ken Norton completely. Now, right at that juncture, I think you saw that Ken Norton was a beaten man. He did all he could just to get off the ropes. But again, just a stinging left hand to the face right there. Now Cooney turns Norton around, and once he does that, he misses those two uppercuts. I think it was the last punch he missed. Well, right here we see a lot of punches being thrown. And right here, I think the fight, the referee should have jumped in. Look at the punches that are being thrown and landed. Just a brutal beating in a very short space of time, administered by Jerry Cooney to the former champion Ken Norton. Ray, we're going to get another shot at this from a different angle. Let's look, look at it one more time. Now we can see the power that Cooney possesses as he throws that beautiful left hook. It's a very short and powerful left hook. And here Norton is basically trying to hold on because he is hurt. And Cooney's trying to get around him. In fact, he's doing a pretty good job of movement, gaining position, gaining leverage, and starting to take full control of the opportunity that he has here. Now, he missed those two uppercuts, but after that, he did not miss a punch. There's one right here, one, and then two, and another punch that scores up on the shoulder, although at this juncture, that can hurt. Three, four, and five or six more punches before the referee, Tony Perez, finally stepped in and stopped the fight. There was always the question about the right hand. That question was answered tonight. Right now, Larry Merchant is up in the ring. Let's go to Larry, see if he has a report on Ken Norton. Larry? Exactly four years ago tonight, Ken Norton ended the dreams of Dwayne Bobbick with a 58-second KO in the first round. I was here at the time, and I was thankful that I wasn't getting paid by the round. Here tonight, he lasted about twice as long, and that's all. This fight has been star-crossed from the very beginning when it was originally scheduled for a big MAPS promotion here at the Garden. It came back, and the only people who have been hurt worse than Ken Norton tonight have been Madison Square Garden's promoters, because the fight only drew about seven or 8,000 people. The two fighters were promised a total of almost $2 million. There was nowhere near that here in the Garden tonight, estimates that they may have lost up to a $1 million. Now the heavyweight division stands something sort of like this. Larry Holmes is acknowledged and recognized, and rightly so, as the best heavyweight in the world. Right behind him, Mike Weaver, who is a WBA champion, and Jerry Cooney, who is the number one ranked challenger. And two very promising youngsters right behind them, Mike Dokes and Greg Page, both unbeaten, both highly talented. I doubt, however, that Jerry Cooney is going to come out of this fight unscathed. He still hasn't beaten a live young fighter. Now we're going to go back to ringside with Ray and Barry.
Okay, thank you, Larry Merchant. Well, point well taken. The Garden did come out probably the biggest loser. Unquestionably, the biggest winner was Jerry Cooney. Ken Norton had said long ago, actually before he went into his 15-month retirement, that after the Muhammad Ali fight at Yankee Stadium, he was never the same fighter again. He lost the fight in that case that he thought he won. It went 15 rounds, and Norton fought a great fight, went right down to the final round before he lost it. He said, I never trained so hard again. He said, I never could put the same kind of drive, the same kind of feeling into it. I have never been the same fighter ever since. I think that was clearly evident tonight. Ray, I would think that at this point, were you to be Ken Norton, you would have to say, it's been a great business, and now let's think about the movies. I'm quite sure. Ken Norton, he knows fully well now that uh, his career here in the ring has ended, and uh, he's smart enough man to know that. Your body, it tells you, uh, sends you messages in very mysterious ways, and I'm quite sure Ken Norton has received that message. All right, we're going to get an opportunity to see that punch once again. The punch that really did the damage was the very first punch of the fight. It was a straight right hand. They started in the middle of the ring. Actually, Norton doing a lot of bobbing and weaving, an up-and-down kind of motion, rather than the kind of peekaboo style that had become his trademark defensively. Here's another look at it. Larry Merchant has joined us ringside. Now, Larry, let's talk about your evaluation of it. That first right hand really was all she wrote. Well, we've talked about this all night long, that... Ken Norton's problems are early in fights. If he gets past the first few rounds, his confidence grows. But there he was caught by the right hand, and his knees buckled, and he goes to the ropes. Again, characteristically, he did that against George Foreman. He did that against Ernie Shavers. He's doing that against a smart and very strong young fighter here, and he just can't handle it. The left hand right there was the finisher, I believe. He got stunned earlier, and there he goes, and he just got pinned against the bottom strand of the rope, and he was sitting there somehow subconsciously just trying to stay upright by sitting on that bottom strand, but just taking more and more punishment. He was dazed and helpless. Uh, he's all right now. We were in the corner. The doctors didn't want him to do any talking, but he said he was all right. He didn't know what happened and what happened.